Hello. I ended the last video by asking why were the walls of our medieval parish churches painted and what may those paintings tell us about the people and the times they were created. And one way they can be useful to historians is that although the scenes may be biblical, the figures are usually shown in contemporary dress, so we get a glimpse of medieval fashions. Most surviving wall paintings date from after the Norman Conquest and many of them have been repainted or painted over. In some cases, that sequence can be unpicked and interpreted. St Mary's Church at Houghton on the Hill in Norfolk sits in an isolated position at the end of a bridleway. It's now in the care of a charitable trust and the church and a farm are all that remain of the medieval village that once stood here. The church was rebuilt soon after the Norman Conquest but the fabric in the nave appears to contain the remnants of an earlier Anglo-Saxon building and a programme of work has been undertaken to uncover and conserve recently discovered wall paintings and the earliest layers may well predate the Norman Conquest. We have another example of a possible Anglo-Saxon wall painting at St Mary's Church at Bremer which is near Fordingbridge in Hampshire and St Mary's is an almost complete Anglo-Saxon church. I might return to this subject in a future video. And survival of this low relief rood and its background is quite astonishing. It had been repositioned from inside the church to an external situation above the south door where it was open to the elements for several years before the porch roof was raised to, to cover it. There are some doubts about the date but it's quite likely to be around 1000 AD. Suffered significant damage not only from the elements but also at the Reformation and so it's hard to make out the scene. But what we have are close to life-size figures of the Virgin Mary and St John on either side of Christ on the cross. On the west wall of the porch there is a painting showing the suicide of Judas is quite an uncommon scene. Again difficult to see as you look at it the tree is on the left, Judas hangs on the right wearing yellow. It may be a little later but the colours indicate a similar kind of date. And there is another rood almost exactly the same as that at Bremer at St Swithin's Church Headbourne Worthy in Winchester. This one is slightly larger it's inside the church on the west wall and has suffered considerable damage again at the Reformation. Dates to around about 1000 AD. With the destruction that accompanied the Reformation, followed by a further purge under the Puritans a century later, it's a wonder that any of these paintings have survived. Instructions were handed down in the reign of Edward VI. I'll just read those to you, a little extract. Take away Utterly extinct and destroy all shrines, pictures, paintings and other monuments of feigned miracles, pilgrimages, idolatry and superstition so that there remain no memory of the same in walls or in glass windows. Why were these walls painted in the first place? It's often said that it was because people were illiterate. So the pictures were intended to be didactic, a way of teaching the uneducated about the Bible, to provide instruction. And there are some letters from Pope Gregory written in the 590s that substantiate that view. He's writing to Bishop Salinas in Marseille and it, in the wake of a wrecking spree justified by the second commandment, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And in response to this wrecking spree, Pope Gregory writes, a picture is displayed in churches in order that those who do not know letters may at least read by seeing on the walls what they are unable to read in books. Well, there may have been some truth in that in the 590s. I think actually it's much more complex. It's not that simple. It doesn't account for the sheer variety and form of many later images. 
for which people needed to be well educated and well informed in order to understand them. Problem is, we don't know what people thought when they saw these paintings or how the images interacted with the liturgy and different aspects of worship. In addition to the high altar in the chancel where the Eucharist was celebrated, many churches had side altars where daily masses were performed and paintings helped to enrich, to complement and to define these different liturgical spaces. And sometimes the paintings survive but the side altars have long since been removed and that means we've lost the reference, we've lost the context that would tell us their purpose. And medieval wall paintings in our parish churches were once seen as naive or primitive and I think that view owes something to the post-reformation, post-enlightenment aesthetic that paintings were evidence not only of popery but also of crude vulgarity, that they were overdramatic and to the more tolerant they were seen perhaps as quaint. And what these assessments miss, I think, is an understanding of what the anonymous painters were trying to achieve, which was a thoughtful and considered purpose. The sacred content of these paintings mattered. And we see evidence during the 15th century of the painters trying to figure out mathematical perspective. They might not be as talented as the masters of the Italian Renaissance, but their intention is no less serious, to engage the viewer. And it's clear, I think, that wall paintings served several purposes. They're decorative. They're there to make the church more beautiful. They're dedicational, connected to the consecration of the church to honour the patron saint. In some cases, they make a personal statement. It's an assertion of patronage, of faith, of commemoration. As with the coats of arms at All Saints Church, Chalgrave in Bedfordshire, we saw in part three. Some served as backdrops to complement and enhance the liturgy or to act as aids to devotion and contemplation, a trigger for reflection, a focus for prayer. Others were intended to educate, to instruct, to provide guidance about right and wrong and contain a moral warning. Many of them have texts. This is St John's Church, Inglesham in Wiltshire, 13th century wall painting, church now in the care of the Church's Conservation Trust. This Annunciation scene has an inscription above it, St Botolph's Church, Hardham in West Sussex. They are clearly not meant for an illiterate audience. An interpretation of different scenes may have depended on the individual viewer. This scene of St George slaying the dragon is a 15th century wall painting in St Gregory's Church in Norwich, but the scene is common, repeated in many parish churches. I think this is going to mean something different to a soldier than perhaps to a pilgrim and something different again to a monk. Now next time I'm going to look at the materials and the techniques employed and look at an example of a wall painting with a very explicit moral message. If you've enjoyed this video hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.